Presents 102, Talk Through. One of my favorite answers of all time, IDK. Not because I actually like seeing children waste their time. Uh, look, man, this kid changed the font up to 96 and typed out those letters and then turned this into me for no credit. But it illustrates something. K-I-D, same three letters. Adult. Not the same five letters, but uh, we'll borrow the K from here. We'll borrow the A from there and add another letter in there just to round things out. A-S-K. I need to move you from being a little kid who's satisfied with this as a response toward becoming an adult who does what a mature adult does when they don't know. Ask. A collage of all these little things. This guy here. Perfect answer. We have our problem statement. They tell me exactly what they're doing in each step. That is how to write up a nice, clean algebra solution. This guy up here, maybe these answers are correct. I don't know. I'm not actually as concerned about the correctness as I am. Show me how you got to them. So be more like that guy. These guys as well, right? I don't, I don't need paragraph explanations. Also, I don't know. The phrasing in these paragraphs kind of makes me wonder if you're having a robot do the problem for you, which you're allowed to use robots, but you need to be smarter than the robots you use. If you're not smarter than the robots you use, don't use them until you gain that knowledge. This guy had some correct answers here and here and left the rest of them blank. Please don't do that. Come into class and ask for help. If you look at the formula, it says percent over 100 times whole equals part. You're looking for a part, not a percent. Don't put a percent symbol. If you're looking for a whole, not a percent, don't put a percent symbol. I appreciate process shown, but uh, my person, if you recognize this, this is you. We, we need to talk about unwrapping variables. This is cool, this first step, if you want to combine the two of these together to get 1.72a equals 64. But hopefully when you've done that, and this might be a thing that, that you need to realize. After I do a step, let me write my line again before I decide to do another step because I think most of you know what to do with this. This guy, very good wrong answer. Very good wrong answer. I like it. Why do I like it? Because I see the process that they did and the process is correct. Divide this here and we've got 1.25w equals 11. And then I'm supposed to divide both sides by 1.25. You come up with a wrong answer there. So that means something went wrong with your dividing. But I'm absolutely cool with the fact that I see what's happening and I know that this is a calculation error rather than a conceptual error. This is a bold declaration with nothing to back it up. Where's your math work? Also, if you're using a percent that's less than 100, it's going to make the picture smaller. We want the picture to fill a normal sized paper, so we want the picture to get bigger. I know what you're doing. You took two lengths, multiplied them together, got a number. Took two other lengths, multiplied them together, got a number. You added the numbers together, got this number, rounded. I know what you're doing. It's not at all related to the formula that you were given. Don't just play with numbers in a problem. Use them in a logical manner. I told you guys there are alternate formulas that you could look up or maybe already know from middle school. But there's maybe 50 correct paths and 200 billion incorrect paths. Don't just guess at a random path. If you're not sure what to do, make sure you're following the formula and come into class and ask if you're really lost. This is a more reasonable answer. Also not backed up though, because I used a formula and that will make the picture an improper fraction, but just enough to fit because I used a formula. Uh, that's nice. Tell me what formula you used. Ooh, 16,000%. Ah, all right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So I had a lot of people do this. I had a lot of people find the area of the picture and then find the area of a page. Um, 
area is interesting. You're, I, we might look at this. We might look at this later in the year. This is really a geometry concept, how the ratios change with area as opposed to length. But you didn't want area with this. I do understand why some people might have might have thought area because I, you were given a length and a width. But for this particular problem, you want to choose length. Do the problem only dealing with the lengths or choose width. Do the problem only dealing with the widths or preferably best case scenario do both directions get two different answers and then decide like a professional graphic designer would have to decide which of those two numbers you should pick money problems money problems for all my people that swear I know how to count money so I don't need math this is more how money hits you in the real world and you're going to get ripped off if people find out you can't do the math. This is a legit setup, almost percent over 100 times. I don't know the whole. Yep. And I want that to equal 500. The only thing that I would change in the setup is up here, I say, I basically tell you use 102.57% instead of using 2.57%. So if that was 102 right there, you would have a perfect setup for your formula problem is you don't you don't do the algebra right from that point even if you used your even if you used your numbers you're not doing the algebra correctly to get this this answer this person again legit legit start percent over 100 they got the proper percent problem is they got their 500 in the wrong place all right we want a question mark here we want our 500 over here I also always want you to ask, does the answer make sense? You say, you say that I'm going to go to the bank and put $512.85 into the bank today. And when I go back a year from now, I expect to have lost $12.85. Is that really what you expect from banks? I hope not. So you should have been saying to yourself, mm, something's wrong. You might not have been able to figure out what is wrong. And then you come into class and say, yo, Mr. Thomas, this is what I did. What, what's wrong here? And I easily could tell you, shift the 500 to the other side. See what happens. See if you get a more reasonable answer. So correct. You got, I mean, incorrect. You got numbers in the wrong place, but you, this is the format of the formula, which I appreciate you putting down. But if you're going to say, I know that's wrong, I need help, don't turn the paper into me. In class, I give like an hour for questions. Screen share, show this to me. You don't, you don't have to type all this out. You can just speak it. Mister, this is where I put my numbers. Help me. What, what's wrong? What should I shift? What should I think of differently? This is a more reasonable answer. More reasonable answer. It's wrong because you did you made the same mistake as somebody before you. You found out what 2.57% of 500 is and then you just subtracted it from this instead of using the percent formula that we've got. I'm I'm cool with the fact that this makes sense. I'm cool with the fact that this this answer makes sense in terms of if I was going to make an estimation, but I want you to be using the formula that you were given. And if you had used the formula, you're slightly off with that. I like though, I like though your follow-up reasoning. All right, so I like this part too, where you're saying, all right, if I make this much interest in one year, maybe I'll make four times that in four years. So I like that reasoning. It is not, it's also not completely correct, but it is a good starting point to think about how, how money grows over time. All right, my people, I infer you got to put $12.85 in because that's 2.5% of 500. $12.85 is 2.5% of 500. You're correct with that statement, but I think that you should recognize this as an unreasonable answer. If, if you could really put 13 bucks into a bank account today and one year from now it would be worth 500 everyone would be trillionaires why would you why would you not be dropping 
every dollar you had into the bank if it would grow by this much in a year. So, no, the answer is not right. Use the formula. Use the formula. I don't know either. Uh, I don't know where I don't know where you went with this because I see a start of a thought here that never gets finished. I see a start of a thought here. You're saying that if I if I get 2.57% in one year, then maybe I get four times that in four years, which again, I'm cool with that type of reasoning, but then where the number come from? I don't know. Did you then multiply this again times four and subtract it from 500? That's what it looks like could have happened, but you don't have any you don't have any steps shown. So that that really leaves me with no way to help you. If your sentiment is I don't even know at this point, stop turning the work in. Come into class, ask the question that you need. A day late is not going to kill you as much as turning it in like this is, right? You need to ask the question while it's fresh in your mind. Get that paper done, then turn it in.